All right, welcome everybody. So in this video, we are going to connect this Gram-Schmidt process that we've been discussing, which is a process for taking a basis for a subspace and finding an orthogonal basis for that same subspace. So the example that I wanna take a look at is gonna involve the subspace, which is generated by the column space of matrix A. So matrix A, is this um, four by three matrix where the first column is three, one, minus one, three. The second column is minus five, one, five, minus seven. The third column is one, one, minus two, A. And so the column space of this matrix is gonna be some subspace of the codomain of this matrix, which is R4. So what we're gonna find is some subspace of R4. So the first thing we need to do is find a basis for the column space, and then we'll worry about how we can tweak that basis so that it's orthogonal. So I don't know what the dimension of the column space of matrix A is yet. I don't know how many vectors I need to construct the basis. So the first thing that we would want to do would be let's put this matrix into its equivalent reduced row echelon form so that we can identify which columns have a pivot. And so <clears throat> performing uh, row operations on this, and if you look uh, down in the description of this video, there's a link to a Colab notebook where all of the calculations in this video are done. So you can verify these calculations, um, but using the SymPy library, we can put this into reduced row echelon form, and we see that we have a pivot in each of the three columns. So therefore, a basis for the column space of A is gonna consist of the original column vectors corresponding to each of the pivot columns. So that's all three. So the column space of A is a subspace of R4, which consists of three basis vectors, the first one being the first column of matrix A, three, one, minus one, three, the second one being the second column of matrix A minus five, one, five, minus seven. And then the third basis vector for the column space is the third column of matrix A, which was the column vector one, minus one, two, eight. So now we wanna go ahead and find an orthogonal basis for the column space. So these basis vectors, at least at first, are not orthogonal to each other. So we're gonna apply the Gram-Schmidt process to find an orthogonal basis for the column space of A. So here we're gonna find three vectors that are all orthogonal to each other and span the column space of A. Okay, so now that we've got A basis for the column space of uh, matrix A, let's now go through the Gram-Schmidt process. So now the question is, let's apply the Gram-Schmidt process to this basis so that we can find an orthogonal basis for this same subspace. So just recall how this process goes. First, we define V1 to be the very first vector in this uh, basis, which is the vector three, one, minus one, three. And then we apply Gram-Schmidt, where uh, the next basis vector V2 is going to be the complement to the orthogonal projection of x2 onto the subspace spanned by v1. So we find this weight, we uh, multiply it by v1 to get the orthogonal projection, and then we subtract that from x2 to pull off the complement to that orthogonal projection. And that's going to be the vector v2. So let's go ahead and calculate this um, vector v2, all of the calculations that I'm going to show are verified in the CoLab document, which is linked in the description of this video. Uh, but the vector x2 is minus 5, 1, 5, minus 7. When I take the inner product of x2 with v1, we get minus 40. Taking the inner product of v1 with v1, we get 20. So this weight that we have in a multiplying by v1 is just minus 2. And then we um, subtract that orthogonal projection from x2 to get the complement of that orthogonal projection, which in this case simplifies to the vector 1, 3, 3, minus 1. So here's my first vector in the basis, v1. 
The second vector is V2. And it's a good idea to check at this point that when you take the inner product of V1 and V2, indeed, we do get zero. So V1 and V2 are orthogonal to each other. And next, when we bump up to the third vector uh, that we need to find for this basis, now we're going to take the vector x3 and we're going to subtract from x3 the, orth the orthogonal projection of x3 onto the subspace spanned by v1 and v2, my, my previous two vectors. So this Gram-Schmidt process is an iterative process. I can't get v3 until I know what v2 and v1 are. But it's a very similar calculation in terms of we have the same formulas for the weights. We just now have two weights that we need to calculate. And uh, again, these calculations are, are done below, but we would take the vector x3, which is um, 1, 1, minus 2, 8. And then we're going to subtract from that c1, which happens to be, in this case, 30 over 20 times v1, which was this vector 3, 1, minus 1, 3. And then we subtract the next weight, c2, which happens to be minus 1 half times v2, which we found in the previous step to be 1, 3, 3, minus 1. So I take x2, subtract these two vectors from it, and this gives us a third vector, v3, which simplifies to minus 3, 1, 1, 3. And now you can check that this vector v3, when I take the inner product with v2, we get 0. And when I take the inner product of v3 with v1, we also get 0. So these three vectors that we've just identified, v1, v2, v3, this forms an orthogonal basis for the column space of matrix A. And you may be wondering, uh, we've seen that orthogonal bases are super nice and orthonormal bases are even nicer. So the, if we want to find an orthonormal basis for this subspace, then we just have one additional step that I'll outline on the next slide. So if we're working with this um, 4 by 3 matrix A and we want to find a basis for the column space, then we can put it into reduced row echelon form, identify the pivots, and then pull off the columns of matrix A. Uh, that is likely not to be orthogonal basis unless matrix A is particularly nice. So we went through the Gram-Schmidt process and we were able to find or an orthogonal basis for the column space of A, which was given by these three vectors, 3, 1, minus 1, 3, 1, 3, 3, minus 1, and minus 3, 1, 1, 3. And now if I want to go further and find an orthonormal basis, these vectors are already orthogonal to each other. So changing their lengths is not going to change, is not going to affect the angle between these vectors. So it's not going to affect the orthogonality of these vectors. So I'm just going to normalize each of these three vectors by dividing each of them by the length of the vector. So all three of these basis vectors in our orthogonal basis happen to have the same length. Um, that is generally not necessarily the case, so you just need to be careful. But I calculate the length of this first vector, v1, which is the square root of 20. So to find the unit vector in this same direction, we just divide each of the entries in our vector by the magnitude of that vector. And we do that for each of the three vectors in our orthogonal basis. And now the result is these three vectors are all orthogonal to each other and they all have a length of one. They're all unit vectors. So now we have an orthonormal basis for the column space of A. And recall that these are especially nice because they make calculating the projections even easier than it is when we're working with an orthogonal basis.